Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace a skyline in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We're doing something really cool today. We're actually going to take a portrait that won one of our contests uh, last week. If you guys want to enter our contest, you can do so on Flurn.com. There's a new contest every single week. And we're actually going to take that image, we're going to take the skyline out of that and for, grab another picture, and we're going to put the skyline into that. We're going to do some work with coloring and masking. It's going to be really cool. If you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share it with all your friends and leave a comment down below letting us know, did you like this? What's going on? Did you want to see something else? Maybe you have a suggestion for an episode. We listen to them, guys. Thanks so much. Let's get into our episode. So here's what we're going to be doing. We've got our image by Chris and uh, I actually really like this image. I like the mountains and I think it looks really great, but um, I just thought it might be a cool teaching point to show you guys how to put this skyline into this image. And this is from our, uh, this is from Flickr Creative Commons. So this is by Kieran K. So the first thing I'm going to do is use our move tool. I'm going to hit V for the move tool and then I'm going to hit shift, click and drag from one image to another one and then hit F for, for our full screen. I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit so I can kind of see both images at the same time. And we're going to hit Command T to bring up our transform dialog. And then I'm going to lock the width and the height here. And we're just going to kind of like drag that down a little bit because we're, we're just going to make this a little bit smaller so it kind of fits in our image. Now I chose two images that have water like in the foreground, both the background image and the image of the city. That's just, just going to make the composite quite a bit easier. Now let's, next, let's just push our sky up right about there so our horizon matches and we're gonna hit that checkbox right up there and there we go we're gonna be good to go so you probably have noticed by now that the color is totally wrong let's go ahead and hit V and then 0 to bring our opacity back up to 100 how do you match color this is a big thing when you're compositing a lot of people really focus on masking which is a big part of compositing but if you can get your color to match really really well you won't have to do so much with your masking so I'm gonna show you guys how to do both Let's go ahead and put a layer mask on this layer and I'm gonna just gonna grab a br uh, regular brush and I'm gonna paint black right here on the bottom of our image. There we go, just to get this area gone. Okay, so what we have now is the uh, city skyline and we have our original image and it's kind of masked away. The reason I didn't do all the masking just yet is I want to compare the water in the city skyline with the water in the mountain part of the photo and we're going to change some colors and I just need to be able to see the contrast between them. So to change the colors all we're going to do is we're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to hit the adjustment layers and we're going to go to curves which is going to create a curves adjustment layer. Now if you just use this normally let's say I make it brighter or darker it's going to affect the whole image right it's affecting both the city as well as the original photo. But if I clip this to the layer with the city on it, it's only gonna affect the city. So it's actually not that hard to do. Just right click here on the curves adjustment layer, adjustment layer and go to create clipping mask. And then you can see it's got an arrow that's gonna tell you it's only gonna affect this layer. So now if I make this brighter or darker, check that out. It's only affecting that layer. So I can adjust the colors of this layer without it messing with the colors of the other one. Okay, first things first, we need to change some colors. We can see there's quite a bit of yellow in here and um, we don't want that much yellow. So we're gonna go to our blue channel. Now keep in mind when you're working with color channels and things like that in Photoshop, the blue channel, the opposite of blue is yellow. The opposite of red is going to be cyan and the opposite of green is gonna be magenta in Photoshop. So if we wanna take away some of the yellow and add more blue, all we have to do is go to the blue channel and we're just gonna pull up our blues. And this is gonna help us start to match the colors from this image to the other one. All right, let's go ahead and click and drag this down a little bit. Now, I've done this plenty of times, guys. So to me, it's like a little bit kind of common sense. It's still difficult, but it's still kind of common sense. But if this is like, whoa, I have no idea how to do this, um, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just get in here and practice, practice, practice. You're gonna start to be able to see color in a whole new way. So let's go to our green channel now. We can see, I don't know if it's that obvious, but to me, there's a little bit more green here than there is there as well. So let's just go to our green channel. And I'm going to start to pump that up a little bit and we're going to pull this down just a little bit more. All right, so we're seeing we're matching just a little bit better now. Okay, cool. Now our lights need to be a little bit lighter as well. So I'm going to go to the RGB, which is basically just light and dark. And I'm going to bring in 
Let's bring our lights up just a little bit brighter as well. There we go. And I'm just kind of like looking at one image versus the other one. And maybe our darks could come down just a little bit. All right, and that's looking pretty good. It's not perfect just yet. I had, didn't spend a ton of time on this. There we go, bringing the blues up just a little bit more. And that's helping out quite a bit. All right, and that looks pretty good. So all that with the curves adjustment layer, really, really cool stuff. And you can see you can adjust all your colors as well as light and dark in the same thing. And now when I see this transition right over here, I turn that layer on, I pretty much don't see that it's a different image. So that's huge. That's a big part of our job done. We don't have to worry so much about getting a perfect layer mask now because the color is pretty much right. So let's go ahead and work on our layer mask now. I'm gonna click on our layer mask here and I'm just gonna just paint bright, like I'm gonna paint black and I'm gonna choose a very soft edge brush, a large soft edge brush. I'm gonna use a low flow and that's just gonna allow me to paint just a little bit at a time, painting that black away. And that's just gonna help give it a nice easy transition. Okay, now we're just gonna grab our black paintbrush here and I'm gonna paint that in where the couple is. If you wanted to get super well refined with your layer mask here, I would recommend using a pen tool. In this case, I'm just gonna use the brush tool, uh, mostly just because it's quick and this is, a, this is a free online tutorial and I don't need to spend 30 minutes in here uh, making a perfect mask. But if you guys were doing this for a client or something like that, I would, recommend, um, I would recommend going in with a pen tool and really making this mask perfect. But I like to zoom in, make my brush a little bit smaller. There we go. And usually I can get a pretty good layer mask with just a brush tool. If you guys still find that um, you can't get a great layer mask with a brush tool, no worries. Just practice, 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 and you will get there. All right, there we go. And let's paint that away as well. Bring that kind of building in there and then paint away the mountains back on this side again. Very nice, and they've got a mountain in between them which should be a building. Perfect. So if your layer masking is pretty good and your color work is on the really good side, then your composite should totally work out for you. All right, and let's paint that in and we're almost done here. So let's zoom out and see what we have. Really, really cool. So here is our image and you can see just this and the layer masking, I was a little bit sloppy up towards the top of their head because it's like white versus white. They're, it doesn't have to be a perfect layer mask. That's why the color is so important. All right, let's check it out before with our mountains in there and the after with our city. You know what, I'm gonna bring in, cause I like, kinda like this little bit of um, vignetting that was going on there. I'm gonna click then and just grab my black brush and just paint just a little bit of that original vignetting in. Just cause I kinda thought it was nice and it'll help it look like it's back to the original image. So you can see, not too big of a deal. And that's all you have to do with compositing. Get your colors right and you can use that with a curve adjustment layer and then throw in a layer mask and you're good to go. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It means a lot, hang out with me. I don't have a lot of friends, so it's really nice. If you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can check out, we have hundreds and hundreds of more of these videos. Share them with your friends, and if you have any questions or comments or ideas, leave them in a comment down below. Thanks so much, guys. We'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Guys, I wouldn't suggest uh, allowing your girlfriend to watch this video. They're probably gonna leave you um, now that they know someone like this is around. <laughs>